Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Let me just do a quick audio check. Hello, hello, hello. All right, I am super good to go. All right, sounds like I am ready to go. All right, we have a jam packed Saturday, okay, especially for us. Super busy Saturday day for us. All right, all right, so we're going to get right into it today. All right. You see, yep, everything's looking good. Got cameras. Let me make sure my computer's good. All right, looks like my computer's ready to go. All right, we are ready to get some learning here. All right, all right. All right, so today's episode, okay, uh, 3D puff versus flat embroidery. Okay, and this is kind of a continuation from last week. So last week, uh, I talked about the LA Dodger logo. And the main thing, the, the key concept that I kind of talked about last week was critical points, critical areas that we kind of have to analyze. All right. And I'm going to kind of uh, also revisit that LA Dodger because uh, after doing a um, different type of testing, okay, it's all about every time you test a certain uh, garment or a certain project, there's always lessons learned or little minor tweaks that we can always make. So as I was testing, I came up with uh, little minor tweaks that I kind of want to share, all right, just to make everything, any, any small critical point that's kind of standing out a bit, okay, that way we could kind of fix any small little tweaks here and there. Okay, so today's uh, episode, okay, this is kind of, this comes from like a very popular question that I always see, I'm pretty sure a lot of you always see this, and it's always, how do I know if something's designed for um, 3D Puff, or can I use, can I use my design that was used for my polo shirt, can I use it for a hat, and vice versa, I have a hat, can I use it on a polo shirt, okay, so Usually, right, usually you have a design that works for whatever uh, specific project that you have, then you would you would sometimes assume that it's safe to kind of transfer it to a different type of garment. And sometimes it may work. Okay, I've had a situation where a 3D puff hat actually works very good on a beanie, especially since the density is real high. Okay, uh, so there, there is situations that you may get lucky that you may be able to transfer a uh, polo shirt onto a hat, okay? I'm not going to say that it's impossible, but the chances are very small, all right? So we'll kind of talk about, okay, you got an echo? All right. All right, let me see. Um, all right, let me, let me, uh, I think it's my, my phone here. Hold on, give me one sec. Thank you for the heads up. Give me one second. All right. Uh, how to mute my phone? Uh, let me know if I'm if I still have that echo. Okay. All right, right, right. Let me do an audio check. Let me know if I'm good to go. Do you still hear that echo? Check, check, one, two, three. All right, thank you very much for that heads up. All right, uh, I just got my new phone, okay? So I finally got, uh, I, my last phone was the iPhone 10. So I finally got the iPhone 14. And you know, every time you get a new phone, there's always new, um, there's always new settings that you gotta mess with. All right. Uh, I definitely want to do a lot of uh, I'm going to do a whole lot more videos now that I got my phone. I got a lot of accessories just to kind of make sure we get good angles anytime we're doing any type of embroidery. So look out for that. All right. Good to know that Echo is gone. All right. So uh, going back to today's topic, 3D Puff. OK, uh, so we're going to analyze Okay, uh, the San Diego logo. All right. San Diego logo definitely has uh, critical uh, critical points that we gotta gotta look out for. All right. Usually, critical points 
can be, okay, can become a headache. All right. In a perfect world, everything would have sharp corners and, you know, everything would be textbook ready for puff. All right. But there are situations where, you know, we kind of kind of uh, we, we kind of have to digitize to avoid certain things to happen. OK, so um, big thing here when we're talking about 3D puff, biggest thing I would say is uh, 3D puff difference. I would say the biggest difference between 3D puff and flat embroidery really is the perceived value. OK, the perceived value. 3D puff just looks more expensive. So if, if somebody uh, is getting a quote for a 3D puff, they would expect to pay more than something that's just flat, especially, especially on hats. OK, especially, especially on hats. It's like day and night when you're talking about a, uh, a hat with 3D puff versus a hat with, uh, you know, just flat embroidery. OK, it's like day and night. All right. And since it's so different, since the perceived value and really what perceived value is, is how much more expensive does it look? Really, that's what it comes down to. OK, uh, of course, there's other right. There's different ways to kind of break it down. But that's really what it comes down to. OK, when we're talking about perceived value, you can charge higher. All right. Not necessarily meaning that it took you longer to make it. It's just it looks more expensive, so it's perceived to be of higher quality. OK, so. I'm always pushing for 3D puff because especially if, if you have any type of competition, OK, that kind of does similar types of work. OK, 3D puff is just going to put you at that next level. And even if even if you do have competitors that do 3D puff, OK, now what separates uh, the design is really comes down to is the critical points, the critical locations. All right. So uh, what I want to do this morning, all right, I want to take a small field trip here to a website that I like to use as a reference. Hold on. Sometimes I get confused because as you can see, I'm using two, mo two mouse. All right. So sometimes I select the wrong mouse to, to get the wrong computer. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me show you this website that I use. All right, let me change screens real quick. All right, let's go on the big screen here. All right, let me see. Yep, looks good to go. All right, this is the MLB shop. All right, I would highly recommend you uh, have this on your favorites. Okay, this website here. So MLBshop.com. Okay, a uh, reason why I like to use this. All right. Uh, not only is it inspirational, right? Anytime I'm, I'm in a rut, like in a design rut, and I just wanna see like the best of the best products, right? So I can go to San Diego here. All right, let me see, yep. All right, I can go to San Diego. And then you could go, depending on what projects you're doing, right? You can go to, uh, so we'll go to CAPS since today's topic is kind of talk about CAPS. All right, and you can see kind of uh, color combination. So let's say somebody has a logo, right? Uh, similar to a, a specific sport, you could kind of see which colors go with what. All right. So if you're kind of trying to think of uh, color combos, all right. But what I like to do, okay, I like to analyze uh, specific critical locations. So let's go open a new link here. Okay. And then you could select the angle of the hat that you want. So I want front side. And I'll open it here. And then I'll zoom in. I'll zoom in, right? So I can see, okay? So let me see. I, you kind of see my cursor here, all right? What I'm looking at here is specific critical points here, okay? For example, this corner here on the D, so if we're looking on the top corner, top left corner of the D, you can kind of see how it kind of comes out on the corner. All right. So this is kind of areas when we're digitizing, we got to think about. OK. And then this is where I would say the biggest problem with 3D puff is usually foam sticking out. OK. And this is when I'm talking about critical point. 
Uh, I'm talking about this is an area where definitely foam could definitely stick out in this area if we're not, if we don't uh, kind of analyze this portion here. Okay, you can see the capping. All right, so last week we kind of talked about capping. You can see their capping here. And then here on top of the S, all right, on top of the S, we have a we have a special kind of opening here. Okay, so this here, super critical point because this because this could become kind of a headache here. Same thing with the bottom of the S. You can see how that detail. Okay. And let's see. Uh, also, this bottom corner of the D. All right. Really, it's it's kind of like a straightforward logo. All right, with the exception of these little small details that we're talking about and there's actually a san diego hat so notice here right they have these critical points they do have a, a version of the san diego hat where it's like a throwback um it's a throwback version so let's say this one here all right where so this one's the 1984 world series all right, so notice they have kind of like a different logo here. All right, so new image and tap, all right. All right, so now you can see the corner of the D is a little different, all right. They just have a regular block type D. And then you could see their uh, capping here, okay. So even, even the most on a professional level, because I would call, I would consider uh, everything on this shop, like kind of, uh, professional level. Okay. Even on them, I would say they're capping, right? You could still see their capping. Okay. I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent perfect because sometimes you're never going to get a hundred percent perfect. All right. So you could kind of see their capping here on the S they don't have that little detail where the S kind of opens up on the corner. So it's a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more simpler. Okay, so here, yeah, this one here is very simple. Okay, so there are situations if you do have a chance, uh, if you're able to switch up a logo a tad bit, okay, or a design. I want to say a logo because a logo is kind of hard to switch up. Okay, but if there's a specific design that's giving you trouble, sometimes you might have to uh, change the ends to kind of make it fit a little bit easier. All right, so if that kind of makes sense. All right, so let me see. So I would say, all right, I like coming here. So I like coming to this website. And then you could go to like any logo, any team, right? Uh, let me see. All right, so my goal, all right, let me open up my screen right here. All right. My goal this year by that by within the next couple of weeks is to digitize all the logos. OK, all these logos, test them out. And I'm definitely using this website. As a uh, as a guide. OK, so here, let's say like. Uh, the New York Mets. All right. And you could just zoom in and you can see. All right. Let's see this one. Right, we could come in and we can see the details, right? And and really what you're looking for when you're zooming in this much, okay, you're looking at the angles, at what angles are they coming in? And and you could see the break line where they came in an angle, they switched it up, and now they're moving at a different angle. So we're looking at angles. Okay, so today when we talk about uh the digitizing portion, you'll see what I'm talking about when I talk about the angles. Okay, you want to know at what angle is the thread moving? Okay, so you want to see at what point does it connect? Okay, so this is all small details. All right, all right, it's kind of so I, I use what I wanted to show you was I use this website. So anytime I want to know what's overlapping, right? Because if we just see the logo by itself, we don't know what's what's overlapping. Okay. So we want to know what's overlapping. So for example, here on the San Diego. Okay, hold on, let me put up the normal one. So on the San Diego, you want to know is the S on top of the D or is the D on top, right? And then when we look at it, 
All right, you can see they're kind of crisscrossed, but the D, this bottom part of the D, is on top of the S. All right, so very important to kind of have a reference. Okay, so if a company that you're working for has already a logo, you want to know uh, what part of the logo is on top of what. Okay, because you could kind of mess this up and put the S in front of the D if you don't have a, a reference point. Okay, so that's always the important part in um in 3d puff okay so let's go out here all right so different versions is what i was showing you here all right and then this website is just good because it's not only hats you could also see like um let's see the la you could just see like anything right like polo shirts let's see oh shirts Pants, jackets, right? Jackets is always a big one, right? You can see how they kind of, you can have ideas of left chest. Okay, so let's see. Uh, sometimes you might have a picture that's uh, like Photoshopped, but for the most part, they have some pretty good stuff, All right? This one, you can't really zoom in too much when it starts getting blurry, all right? So sometimes you, I mean, but, but for the most part, the hats, they do a pretty good job on, on not Photoshopping the hats. Okay, so this one, let's see this one. This one's like, a, you could see whether it's an applique or not. All right, yeah, this one's applique. So you could, we're here, let, let's say we're, we're using this as a sample, okay? You can see the angles of their sand stitches. All right, you can see how they kind of do it, all right, which looks real clean, okay? So a lot of times, Okay, you can use this as a reference. Just kind of see see how the professionals do it, right? Like, what would they do? All right, all right. Let me go back to the software. All right. All right, let me go to the light box here. Let's make this big here. All right, so I got some samples here that I kind of want to show you. But before I show you some samples, let me see. Yeah, the lighting looks good there. Okay, let me see. All right, um, something that I kind of want to show you. So I have a printout of the SD. So when I'm talking about critical points, like if you if you see, let's zoom in a bit. All right, so if you see, this is my critical point, this D, okay, this D, when we're talking about 3D puff, okay, and this area, so I'm kind of highlighting areas, and this part, okay, that's really um, critical areas, because this is where, where foam could start popping out, all right, that would give you kind of a headache. All right, minor details, minor criticals, ones that kind of can get taken care of real simple. All right, it's where they connect. So in this area, we know this part of the bar is going over. This part of the S is going over, okay? Uh, so this these would still be considered critical locations, okay? But they're not as, as critical as these corners that we might have to do readjustments to certain stuff, all right? Now, if we're doing flat, okay, this is only in a in a 3D puff situation. If we're doing flat, then this is no problem, okay? The thing with flat is that it's so straightforward, okay? We can just shape this S out and we're good to go. We really don't have to add the capping. So here, we would kind of have to add capping, okay? For the flat, okay, which I, I have a sample here, all right? But actually, let me show you here. I do have a sample here. All right. So this one would be flat. And then, all right, let me see if we got a good lighting here. All right. So we got, um, yeah, let me zoom out a bit. All right. So we have flat on the right and puff on the left. Okay. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay. So here, Okay, here, I don't know if we can tell too good. 
Okay, we have to include our our uh, capping, or else foam would be sticking out of this area here. Okay, same thing here, here, All right? So the areas that I highlighted, okay, that that needed extra attention. Whereas something like a flat, okay, we don't have to worry about capping. You're just kind of digitizing according to the shape. All right. So I kind of want to show you here. All right. Uh, everything is pretty much straightforward. Okay. Uh, one thing about one thing about so the main difference between the biggest difference is kind of like the density. Okay. So here I have on the flat, I have a, a double zigzag underlay. And my density, since I have double zigzag, all right, it's pretty dense down below. So I, I put it at a 0.4 at a 0.4 density, okay? Here, right, I, I need to cut this foam that's right below it, okay? We're at a 0.18, okay? So that's almost double the density. And if you double the density, that means we're doubling the stitches or close to doubling stitches, all right? So big difference between flat and 3D puff, okay? It's the amount of stitches. So here at this flat, okay, 1,600 stitches. Okay, 1600. And here we're looking at about uh, 3000. Okay, close to 3000. All right, we'll see the numbers right now when I pull them up. All right, so a lot of times you can be doubling your stitches. All right, another, uh, another big difference is you want to slow down your machine when you're doing 3D puff. So on top of doubling your stitches, you want to slow down your machine. So it's going to take more time to complete. So even though uh, we're charging more on 3D Puff because of the perceived value, you're also charging more because it takes longer or potentially can take longer than a, um, than a flat one, okay? So digitizing, this would be a whole lot quicker, okay? Because you don't really have to worry too much about our critical points, okay? So speed-wise, you're moving very quick. Okay, you're moving very quick. Now, what I like to do, okay, I like to find a company that's, uh, that wants to do 3D puff and take my time, okay, take my time, make sure all these critical points that could make or break a design, all right, make sure that any tweak that we got to take care of, okay, is, is, is kind of analyzed and uh, sampled out. Okay, that way, once you got it, once you've done the sample, all right, now you could just start pumping out all your hats. Good to go. All right, so even though the digitizing does this, does take time with the flat, I mean with the puff, okay, uh, when, once it comes time for pricing, okay, you could raise, you should easily be able to raise the price just because of the perceived value. All right. All right, um, one thing that I want to show you, Okay, um, actually, I'll show it to you on the software. Hold on, give me one second. All right. Um, all right, we got a question. TMG, good morning. Uh, what elements did you purchase with your software with E4? Uh, I think I got to see exactly what I got. Um, it was like four different. It came with it. I got it came. It came with it. I got to get back to you on that one. It has like the motif, the the motif, and like three other ones. But I got I got to see. It's a list that I have. All right, let's look. Let's look at our flat. So this here, okay, flat. Let's do a quick replay, okay? Because the flat is real straightforward, okay? Um, so when we're looking at our stitches, okay, 0.4, okay? And then we could kind of, uh, let's replay this. So you could kind of, let me give you a kind of. So usually I like to run that run stitch. 
Okay, run that run stitch just so it could attach to. And then it's going straight into the stitch. Now, you're going to see I kind of broke it up. I kind of broke it up into pieces, this little corner here. Okay, let's talk about, this is really a critical point on my flat, okay? So I just want my angles. I don't want my angles to be too curved. So I did it in portions. I did this portion first, brought it in here, and then did this third one with a double zigzag, okay? Usually my flats, I like to run uh, double zigzags. And then I, I could just uh, lessen up the density. Okay. Um, yeah, so speed that up. Okay. So reason why I stopped at that part of the S is because the D goes over that part. So I'm just going to leave like a little minor gap in there. And then I'm going to walk all the way through, complete that. Okay, and then now go to the S, do this part of the D. And in order to get that sharp portion, I broke it up. I broke that corner up to get the, that corner to be sharp here. All right, so you can see how I kind of sharpened up that corner and broke it up into two pieces. All right, so this one, very straightforward, right? We don't have to worry about capping. Uh, uh, and... I actually made this, I want to make it for a beanie. All right, uh, let's see. So for the beanie, what I want to do, okay, I added, I added knockdown stitch, all right, for a beanie. And I actually just stitched it out before we came on. Let me see if I can find it. All right, let's go to the camera. Let me show you. I stitched it out on a, on a Serpa, so very thick, tight material. Let's go back to the camera. All right. This was my first test run. So just a couple things that I noticed. Sometimes you do a test run and then you find certain things. All right. Let me see if I got it right here. All right. So this here, all right, this is as the thickest material I could find that I have possible uh, here at the shop. All right. So let me see. This is actually the first time that I'm seeing it under the lights. All right, so the top one has the knockdown stitch. Okay, I, I didn't match the exact color as the serp. That was the closest color I had for this knockdown stitch. So you could kind of see the knockdown stitch through there, All right? Um, and then on the bottom, it has without knockdown stitch, right? So this is as thick, right? This is very thick serp, serpa material, All right. Um, Eventually, it's going to go on a beanie, so it's going to work for a beanie, but right now, uh, this is very thick type material, all right? So, it kind of works. Okay, let me see. Now, if I were to go on a material such as this, where it's obvious it needs more density, okay, I would, this right now has a double zigzag, I would include an edge run also. So, an edge run, if you ever get these gaps, like on the side, okay, an edge run would definitely close the these up okay here okay here i have my knockdown stitch okay uh i gotta change down the knockdown stitch i have it at a four millimeter uh length i gotta shut it, uh, turn it down to a 2.5 so i just okay so you catch kind of like little minor things because right now they're kind of loose my uh, knockdown stitch so of course we catch that those little small details during the during the sampling, all right? But if you notice here where it has the knockdown stitch, okay, you really don't see the gapping too much as you do here. So if you have a knockdown stitch, you might not need an edge run because the blue, like you can see the blue portion, okay? From where I'm at here, it looks pretty solid, okay? It looks pretty solid, all right? So, you could that that's kind of showing you the difference if you have a knockdown stitch okay you might get less okay apart from it kind of taming your material you might not necessarily need extra uh underlay all right so kind of i, I kind of wanted to show you a worst case scenario if you have like the thickest type of material all right this is very thick type material all right, 
but it's just good practice so you know when to use specific underlay all right so for flats okay very straightforward this one here let's look at the software let me check this software all right uh, when we go to the flat you'll see it's 1679 stitches all right so there's only uh there's one cut so only one cut at the very end so i like to uh design my my files to have as minimum cuts so really what we're looking for is the pathing all right so that's why it's important to know what's what's overlapping what okay so once again, let's just speed it up real quick, All right? So this one, right, 1,600 stitches, that's gonna take you like minutes, like definitely less than 10 minutes, right? It's, it's very straightforward, all right? Now, let's look at this puff, okay? So I got the puff here. All right, let's run a slow motion on the puff. All right, so this first one, it's always the this one here is the uh, placement stitch okay this is gonna tell me where to put my foam all right notice I didn't really outline the whole design when I put my placement I want to put my minimum so my low part so the bottom of the of the D okay I want to go to the side to the right to the right most furthest part and then I go to the left most furthest portion, all right? And I kind of, in the back of my mind, I know I got to add a little bit of space, okay? So when I'm putting the foam here, and then I'm going to the upper part, okay? So this is telling me that my height, my left, my right, and my bottom portion, where I should put my, where I should put my, um, my foam. Uh, and then let me just make a quick announcement here. All right. Uh, quick announcement. This file. So uh, today's file is available to all channel members. Uh, so I have a YouTube channel member. It's $19.99 a month. And really all the samples, any files that I've been working on, I'm going to put them on a specific folder for all channel members. So if you're a channel member, you have this file available so you could download it and you could kind of follow along uh, and it's really used to analyze uh, measure and kind of see what underlays i use and that way if you test it out you could kind of make your own adjustments or you could kind of uh, tweak stuff around and kind of i think that's the best way that i learn okay the best way to learn is just kind of uh, doing replays of designs and kind of uh, analyzing specific uh, settings that a digitizer might have. Okay. Good practice that I would recommend. Okay. Even the files that your digitizer send you when you send out your files. Okay. Take the time and analyze them, review them. Okay. And a design. Okay. This is a very important key phrase here is a design is never a hundred percent perfect. You can always make one minor tweak and make it better. Okay especially right especially if you are digitizing uh with speed okay there might be little certain details you might miss okay maybe you added an unnecessary cut right so you can always make designs better so what i like to do a lot of my designs that i have uh a couple weeks or months later i like to revisit them and try to see how can i make them better especially if it's a file that we're constantly running okay Maybe I could save a minute here, a minute there, okay? Or even 10 seconds here, 10 seconds there. But when you multiply that by, let's say, 100, um, quant a quantity of 100, okay? Those 10 seconds or that one minute, okay, kind of times itself exponentially, all right? Just as an FYI, all right? So files available to those who are channel members, all right? And my goal, Okay, my goal for the next couple of weeks is to digitize all the Major League Baseball ones. Okay, um, and the reason why I like doing that because each each logo has 
a specific uh, critical location or a critical challenging location that I kind of like to analyze and kind of um, sample out and figure out different ways to create certain stitches. That way, if a company, right, if a company ever contacts you, you kind of already seen a similar type of situation uh, with specific stitches. All right. So highly recommend okay, to become a channel member. That way you can receive uh, the files as I'm kind of creating them. All right. I'm going to be sending them out. All right. All right. Let's continue here. All right. So this here, we always start down with the uh, with the placement stitch. This is going to tell me where to place my stitches. All right. And then continue running it. All right. And then uh, this one here is going to tag down. These first stitches are going to hold down my foam. OK. I know here, right, I know here is where the S and the D connects. So I'm going to make a bridge here, right? This kind of just connects this intersection just so they won't separate kind of in the long run. So a year, two years later, I don't have any separation from that foam there. Okay. So I kind of make a bridge there. Okay. And I'm kind of working my way up and I'm going to encounter my first uh, capping here. All right. And then I'm going to talk about these uh, cap. I kind of came up with a different type of cap that I'm using now. Okay. So I'm this portion here is going to cap this bottom part. And that's so my foam could cut nice and clean. All right. And now I could start. Okay. I could start the, the stitching process. All right. And that's going to take me as far to the first portion where it connects to the D or the second portion. All right. So it crosses there. It's going to go. It's going to, all right, so it stopped here and it ran or walked, walking stitch up to the next, okay, the next cap. All right, so kind of like you see these corners here, it's not like a perfect square. In a perfect world, you get like a nice perfect square edge here, but here, right, San Diego, their logo has this extra kick, right? So that extra umph. So we got to make sure we include that, right? That's all the minor details. That's going to kind of make this design stand out. All right. And then we're going to walk, okay? So this yellow portion, this is below the foam, all right? So now what I want to do is I want to attach my foam. So I'm doing a walking stitch up here and then back. Now I'm going to start my capping here. Okay. So this is kind of like the, the capping that I'm using now. Okay. And I'll kind of talk about it in a bit. All right. So it's one portion. Because last week when I did my capping, I, I broke it up into three pieces. But now I kind of made it into one. Okay. Here, okay, here at this corner. This is where uh, uh, this is where I circled it as a critical location because if you're working with Puff, if we were to just digitize it as is, okay, it would it would be a high uh, there'd be a high chance for foam to stick out at this corner. So usually foam likes to stick out at corners. So what I'm doing here, I'm gonna double up on this corner here. So as you can see, I go down. Okay, my shape shows it that it's gonna go down. And then it's going to go back up and redo that location. All right. So let me slow it down in slow motion. All right. So it's, it's all right. So let me see if you've seen that. All right. Let's go in super slow motion here. All right. So speed it up a tad bit. So it's going to go, go, go to that corner and then overlap itself right there. So it did like a quick overlap. And now it continues. So I know I have double. Okay, I have the double stitching here in this corner. It'll kind of avoid gap uh, foam to gap out. Because really, that's that's really what uh, 3D Puff, what you're looking out for, is you don't want foam to be sticking out. 
okay unnecessary foam okay because there's no matter what foam is always going to come out all right the heat gun is going to remove a lot of that but you don't want an excessive one where there's nowhere for it to go all right all right let's speed this up a bit and here we're running at a 0.18 density okay so our our stitches are pretty tight okay go to that corner it's going to do the same thing that double and then bam finishes there all right so pretty straightforward okay this logo very straightforward logo uh main challenging portion all right i would say is this corner here uh this side of the s here just because you have this little curve here and this part of the same thing here other than that very straightforward okay so here we're at 2800 stitches okay so almost double of our flat all right almost double of our flat all right let me see and i got a stitch out of this let me show you let's go to this camera here all right oh let me see all right we got a good view right here all right actually let me get my pointer i want to point out certain areas all right so here critical critical points here okay so here i got my capping close up that piece got my capping here Okay, closed up that piece and then we definitely want to analyze our corners all right so you want to since we doubled up okay foam stays nice and tack all right let me see if you yep same thing here okay um let me see capping here all right so when i analyze so what i like to do all right, I grab my hat and I want to analyze it with the website that I just showed you. All right, uh, matches. All right, matches, matches perfectly. And like I said, you can always, you can always make a design better. Right. Let's say if I wanted to hide this capping a tad bit, you can always lift this capping a little bit up. Okay, you just don't want it to hide under that sand stitch because then you'll have loose thread, all right? All right, let me see. So this one came out pretty clean. All right, and then um, let me just show you one thing on the capping, okay? All right. All right. All right. Good morning, everybody. I kind of skipped uh, the good mornings today just because it's a very busy morning today. All right. All right. If you have a question, just put a Q in it in the front. All right. Good, good morning. Good morning, everybody. All right. Look like we have a uh, packed house this morning. All right. All right. What I want to show you, okay. It was a little different from last week, okay? Uh, so this um, this 3D puff, I, I kind of want to make it a three-part, all right? So it started from last week when we talked about the Dodgers, okay? Um, this part, part two, okay? I kind of want to introduce a different type of capping. So if we push H here, okay? You kind of see like it's boxed, it's boxed out. Let me see. Um, let's hide all. All right. So if you can see this capping here, H. Okay. It's kind of boxed in. So last week, I broke up my capping into three pieces. But this week, instead of breaking it into three pieces, I just created it into one. All right. So as you can see, let's 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 replay this one here. Okay, um, replay. Let me just show you something. All right, here. All right, so 
instead of breaking it into three pieces, let me just show you how I kind of have it. So what I want in this capping portion, and I'll kind of show you where I where I kind of coming up with this idea right here. All right. Um, here, I want this capping not only to be on the top side and on the left and right, okay? I want it to be on the three sides, but all in one shot. So instead of breaking it up like I did last week, I just made it all in one shot here, okay? And that's just going to eliminate any puff from kind of being trapped here in this little portion of my uh, of my top side of the sand stitch, all right? So it's gonna close it up very clean here. All right, so just kind of like a super slow motion here. All right, but this is kind of like what I'm basing my uh, my caps now with this. So when I push my, so the outsides, it's like a perfect corner, like a perfect box. And then here, right? So if I delete all this, really what it is, right? It's like a box. So, oops. It looks like a box, okay? Well, with specific angles, right? But then we kind of cut it up so it, it has like a circular rounded circle in between. All right, that just kind of helps it clean it up. All right, so if you if you kind of find yourself with, with foam that's sticking out of your, your design, Okay, I would recommend uh, unhide all. Okay, I would recommend doing your capping like that, all right? Um, and that's kind of how I made these two also, okay? This one here, since we had this little uh, corner part, okay, we kind of have to adjust our capping here too, all right? We kind of had to get creative with this corner here, all right? And going back, okay, so I went back and I redid the LA Dodger, okay, the one that we did last week. Okay, specifically this one here, okay, my top side here, all right, so I kind of switched it up instead of making it a three portion, I made it into a uh, one, one solid piece, okay, so it kind of, and then I'll show you, so same thing here, okay, good thing about capping is once you create that first one, okay, you pretty much copy and paste, kind of like what we were doing last week, all right, so it, it kind of looks like a tooth, but the main thing is that we got uh, sand stitches, stitches running on the on the on three sides, well, actually four on the bottom, but the main three sides to prevent to prevent uh, foam from popping out. All right, let's replay this one again, okay? Just because I made minor changes. For those who were here last week, all right, uh, this is kind of what we did last week. Let's see. Oh, we're doing. So let's go fast though. All right, this is that tack down stitch. Okay. Uh, let me slow it down a bit. Let's do this replay real quick. And then I'll show you the hat that I just did. Uh, I did a stitch on this uh, new hat that I'm testing out. Let me know what you think about this hat. It is the PK. So it's the Flex Fit PK hat. Um, very nice. I would say like very upscale type. Uh, maybe potentially for corporate type customers. All right, but you're gonna see how it, all right. Uh, here, what I wanna show you here, okay. So let me just do a replay, cause this one's important here. All right, what I like to do is run this stitch, let it run to the right, complete it, and then have a, a bit of a overlap there. Okay, you see how that overlap there? That just prevents, okay, everything, anytime we do kind of like these special type of uh, arrangements here, it's mostly to avoid foam and gapping from popping out, All right? So we overlap and then we continue. On this one, I have this new run here. I'll probably, I'll probably have a, uh, I'm gonna probably re-digitize this and record it just so I could, uh, just so I could play it on the YouTube, okay? I could kind of put it out on a video. All right. But same thing here, I'm gonna overlap. But what, I, what I'm doing now, okay? Only when necessary, I'm doing that double. Okay, hold on. Here, let me show you something here. 
Okay, here at this corner is a critical point potential for gapping. Okay, so I'll put a sand stitch here to close this gap right here. All right, and then we continue. All right, and then I just close out this whole line in one shot. All right, and then what I wanted to show you was this last part. Yeah, I'm going to make it a video where I'm going to show you how I redigitize this LA logo. Okay. Just made it a little bit more efficient, faster, less stitches. Put that that one and then we close it up with this top one. Bam. All right. But what I want to show you here, all right? So 3000 stitches, all right? 3000 stitches. Uh one of the best logos ever of all time, right? Um bam. All right, but I do want to show you something. The hat that I made the sample on. All right, let's switch over here. All right, so I got this hat here. Okay, it's a 110 Flex Fit 110. All right, this is a, um, what is it called? Uh, oh, let me, hold on, I'm trying to read it, trying to see it. Oh, flex fit, flex tech. All right, hundred percent polyester, but it's oh the PK. All right, so this is the PK, very thin. All right, so this is super stretchy right here. All right, so PK right when we think of PK, we think of like uh, polo shirts. All right, I'm trying to show you the fabric of this. All right, it's very nice. Like it has very nice feel. Okay, I like it. I tested out our design. So I have the new one. So the main thing here, let me get my pointer. Main thing here, okay. So like I'm always looking at critical points. All right, let me see here. Bam, right here. Our critical point, bam, solved. All right, so usually when I'm looking at somebody's uh, LA hat, okay, I'm always looking at like this part of their hat and try to see how it came out, this portion, all right? But our capping, everything kind of comes in pretty clean. But what I did want to show you was this hat here. What I did this week, I'm testing out some hats right now, okay? I definitely like this hat right here. And that's how I got this one here. I got this mesh, right? I kind of, this one is a one size fits all kind of. So it's, there's no size on this one, but it fits me real good, so I like it. I'm going to recommend this because I always get uh, questions about specific hats. Do I recommend this hat? So I like to just purchase them, uh, stitch a design on them, and kind of get a feel for it. All right, so this one's pretty good here. All right. Now, one thing here, what I kind of want to point out is... Anytime I have a design, I always I always sample it out on a flat, right? On a, just a flat, basic twill, okay? A lot of times, okay, a lot of times, certain designs, they're going to look perfect, okay? They're going to look perfect on flats, okay? No matter what, if it looks perfect on a flat, you still have to stitch it out and sample it, not only on any hat, but on the specific hat that you're going to work on. Okay, because a design, like let's say this one here, okay, it's going to look a tad bit different, all right, than something like this with a little harder uh, buckram here, okay? These cappings, they shift a tad bit depending on how hard your buckram is, all right? So I always recommend before you commit, before you go 100, and you go all out on a big project, all right, make sure you stitch it out on the specific garment that you're working on. All right. All right. Let me see. So today, today's episode, okay. Today's episode, very quick, just because super busy day today. All right. But I did want to show you, um, this is going to kind of be uh, what I want to do. Let me go big screen here. What I want to do, okay, what I want to do, uh, I'm going to just start recording while I'm digitizing, 
Okay, but I kind of want to give you a heads up of certain uh, certain points that I'm kind of uh, reference points and critical points that I'm looking into. Okay, uh, that way when you're following along and you're looking at the at at how I'm digitizing, okay, you could kind of see why I'm, I'm kind of concentrated at a certain location. Okay, anytime I kind of stop and I'm in a certain location, it's most likely it's a critical point. That means uh, I'm anticipating foam to want to stick out there. So I got to kind of do something about it in that area. All right. All right. Good morning, Jeanette. Hit the like button, everybody. Yep. Appreciate that. All right. Let me see if we have any questions here. Uh, oh, all right. Good morning from Uganda. All right. Sunny. All right. right. It's actually sunny here. All right. Uh, Northern Illinois. Uh, so I got the SD. So I am moving to San Diego. Uh, I'll, I should be there like in June. All right. Uh, some quick announcements. January. Okay, January. I'm actually moving to Virginia. So I'll be uh, I'll be in Virginia for three, four months. All right. Doing some training over there. Um, and then I move to San Diego in June, June-ish, actually May. May time frame. All right. So um, I am going to have a lot, a lot of time starting January. All right. To do uh, to get into a lot of the details of uh, embroidery. So do look out for a lot, a lot of videos come January. All right. Because all my free time that I have there. OK. Uh, is going to be dedicated to the channel. So I'm very excited about that. All right. I just won't have this very nice backdrop and my shop right behind me. All right. But there is going to be a lot, a lot of information coming out in January. All right. But from here on out, from here to the end of the year, my goal is to um, digitize. I'm going to try to record as much as possible. So I'm going to digitize all the MLB logos. Um, I'm going to stitch them out. OK, so anytime you do. Uh, anytime you do digitize anything. All right. You don't know if you're correct until you stitch it out. All right, because in theory, you could you could you could digitize all day, assume that everything's good. All right. But you do not know until you stitch it out. All right. So we bought a bunch of hats, a, a lot of sample hats that we're going to try out. I want to try out different types of uh, um, options Okay, because sometimes certain certain hats or certain garments aren't available. So you always got to be ready to pivot and you don't want to pivot to something that you haven't tested yet. All right, so we are definitely testing a lot of hats right now. I think I have, I bought every FlexFit hat that they sell, like every different type of FlexFit hat. All right, uh, and then Bevy Jean, where did purchase the hats? I get them at San, uh, not Sanmar, uh, SNS. I get polos in Sanmar, but uh, hats, I like to go to SNS. I like to buy uh, FlexFit and Yupong Dad hats. All right. And then um, salty gravy. I like to stretch, stretch. Yeah, I, I think that hat. All right. I think I'm going to actually uh, order some more of those hats because. Like we said in the beginning, perceived value, right, looks very, very nice, very. It looks different, all right, than your normal hats. So it kind of stands out. All right. Um, and then baby Jean, what am I using to hold my hoops? That's just. Uh, the the holders from ikea you can go to ikea and you can find them very simple and inexpensive way to kind of hold your they have all the accessories there too all right marisa happy saturday all right and then dc oh yeah make sure you visit places in dc yeah uh last time i was in virginia it was uh 2015 and I definitely went to uh, I went to D.C. I got some pretty good pictures from D.C. Yep. Yep. I think it's two hours from where I'm going to be at. Yeah. Two and a half hours to drive. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, today I'm planning to shoot or not today, but today, tomorrow, I plan to shoot three videos. All right. Very good informational type videos. I'm super pumped up. All right. Uh, if you have any if you have any uh, suggestions on any topics, any specific ideas or any questions, anything to make the channel a whole lot better, all right? 
I'm always open for suggestions. Okay. Um, and I appreciate everybody, right? That always asking questions. That's always, you know, pu pushing the envelope, making the channel a whole lot better. All right. I appreciate everybody. And as a reminder, okay, for those who are uh, channel members, okay, $19.99 a month, uh, you, I have the, the, the logos available for download so you can follow along. I have uh, three. I have uh, the puff, I have the flat, and I have the one for the beanie. All right. So, and as I'm making MLB logos, all right, I'm just dropping them in, in that folder there. All right. All right. Thank you for stopping by, everybody. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.